ladies and gentlemen of the 118 scale 3.75 inch 4 inch modern action figure community I am back again with another video and in this video we're going to be discussing none other than the G.I. Joe vs. Cobra Spy Troops line Sky, Sky Sweeper Jet so this Sky Sweeper Jet you see before you um, this isn't the first time G.I. Joe released uh, vehicle under that name. In 1988, under the Battle Force 2000, they had a Sky Sweeper tank, which I'm going to put right here. It was like a, I don't know if it was a tank, if you can classify it as one, but it was a tank style, a tread style vehicle. And um, the driver that was released with that vehicle was uh, known as Knockdown. And also, I'll be putting a picture right here. Um, in around about 2008, 2009, I believe the years was, uh, Rise of Cobra Line re released a totally different looking uh, Sky Sweeper vehicle, and it was piloted by, uh, by Air Raid. So as we discuss this particular aircraft, um, there was other versions of this aircraft as well. Um, in 2004, under the Valor vs. Venom line, um, they released another vehicle just as this one. And um, this one actually was uh, released with a pilot, and the pilot was Sergeant Airborne. And then again in 2009, I believe they released a um, red version for Cobra, and um, it was known as the Crimson Cobra Hydra. So I find it very interesting that um, they would name all these different vehicles the same, all these different aircrafts and um, tanks and, and name them the same name. Can you imagine in a battle, they're like, hey, go get the Skysweeper, and then a little treaded tank vehicle shows up. No, we meant the Skysweeper aircraft, and then a different vehicle shows up, which is a different looking aircraft. And then, So, I mean, hey. But I think in a grand scheme of things, um, it's very difficult to come up with, with uh, new and exciting names for things. So I can imagine, um, you know, it was just a, just a difficult thing. Plus, um, branding and copyright agreements and all that other stuff had to come into play also. So I can only imagine it may have gotten difficult. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the G.I. Joe versus Cobra uh, Sky Troops vehicle known as Sky Sweeper the Jet. Sorry, that was a lot of words, but anyway, let's move along. So, if you see here, this is what it looks like. This is what the box looks like. It has this thing that says sound attack, weapon activated sounds. Um, it says try me. Um, I like. The G.I. Joe logo, is it kind of goes back to the old school logo um, with the head and the, and the helmet on. And, you know, I, I like that logo. It, it, it kind of, you know, it kind of brings me back to my childhood. So with that being said, I like that. And then you have cool art for some of the characters in that line. And it looks like to me that maybe that from the left to the right is Duke, uh, Tunnel Rat, Snake Eyes at the bottom, Scarlet, and Heavy Duty, possibly. I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm not really very familiar with this particular G.I. Joe line. Look at the side. I think, uh, of, again, this is the same stuff that you saw on the front. And I like this box art right here. That is really cool. That looks very nice. I could see that being like, um, you could frame that and have it in your study or your man cave or something. That's pretty cool. On the back, you have this uh, blueprint style um, uh, diagram of what the vehicle or aircraft is looking looks like, and then you have the actual aircraft here. You have a bunch of writing. Um, let's look at this. It says, "Spy troops adds the element of surprise to the battle between GI Joe and Cobra. Disguises and secret vehicles allow." Both teams to go undercover into enemy territory to launch attacks and sabotage the enemy's plans. All right. So you can pause and read the rest of that if you like. 
I'll zoom in on that. And um, I believe that they're using this uh, little pod vehicle here as a decoy vehicle, but we'll get further into that. So here's what the other side looks like. You can see clear through. This is what the bottom looks like. It's a bigger um, look at that cool picture. And then it's got some other vehicles from the line. Um, let's look at that. Oh, okay. Awesome. And this is what the top looks like. So now the moment that we've all been waiting for, we're going to get this guy here out of the box and we're going to move on from there. First, any G.I. Joe aircraft vehicle worth its uh, weight in salt comes with blueprints. And I think that's one of the cooler things that we get with our um, toys here. When we were younger, we got these blueprints and you get to read over it. You get to really examine and um, learn what the vehicle actually does. That's what it looks like. There's little words right here or um, this is um, pretty much what you're getting in the box and you can pause and read that and there's a lot more information back here you can pause and read all of that and if it's too much for you to read in this setting then just go online I'm sure that you can find these blueprints online really cool if I may say so myself so alright ladies and gentlemen here is your jet your aircraft so to speak uh, I think this is really cool it's very reminiscent of the stealth bomber uh, in real time stealth bomber um, a real released aircraft for our military and um, looks really cool very realistic looking and um, a little information a little backstory on the uh, stealth bomber and uh, it was released by Northrop Grumman in 1987 it didn't take its first flight until 1989 and uh, it was ultimately discontinued in 2002 it is known as the B2 Spirit and uh, but we know it as the stealth bomber and that particular vehicle or aircraft sorry was a two-seater vehicle they, they stopped production on it in 2000, ironically, just before this country went into quite a few major wars. So I, I, I find it very interesting. But I was reading that they recently, uh, in 2022, decided to start on a newer version of this uh, stealth bomber. And it's going to be called the, B, um, the B-52A or something like that. Um, it's, I'm sorry, it's the B-21A, if I'm not mistaken. All right, so let's move along and let's have a look at this particular craft right here. So I think, like I said, um, it's cool. It's very realistic. Um, I, I got no complaints on this one. Um, well, I'm sorry. There are some pros. There are some cons, and we'll get into them later. But I actually really like this. And one of the biggest pros of this vehicle for me is that it's small. It's not like um, the Phantom X-Wing was probably about, that thing was probably about three feet long and it only fit two figures. Imagine how much space that thing took up. I didn't have one of those as a kid, but imagine how much space that took up and why a lot of kids didn't have it because the parents were like, that's just too big to fit in the house, you know? So I like that, that these were small. Also, I like that the playability of it, I could see a bunch of these on your deck of your flag and um, really look realistic. I mean, it looks more realistic to have this on your flag than to have a phantom. Um, uh, what do you call those things? The, the phantom vehicle? Yeah, that's it. The phantom X-19. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and look at the cockpit first and foremost. Really cool, very simple co uh, cockpit. And um, we'll look at a modern figure in there later. But for now, let's just have a look at this really cool um, you could see clear through the through the uh, canopy of the cockpit on the side here it says captain or or it says ace 
despite there was no ace figure release with it. Um, you also have, um, let's look at the wings. The wings are recessed. They come out like that. And you can also drop this back and that will reveal some of the West weapon systems inside. So you have this gray button right here releases. You have it on both sides and it releases missiles. Let's go ahead and have a look inside there. You have some very small um, sticker detail inside. Not too much. You didn't go crazy with that. Awesome. We're going to close that up. And pushing these forward actually seals so that this doesn't flop open. Right? So back here, you have these two buttons, which I find is really cool. This is a little bit of a different technology that we didn't see, especially back in the 80s as kids, 80s and 90s. But here, you have these buttons. This one right here will uh, give you engine sounds. And this one right here will give you possibly uh, bullet sounds, or not bullet, but um, uh, rapid fire cannons. There you go. But also to add playability to this thing, they released it with these. And a couple of these are out there. You can probably pick them up. It looks like a missile, but then it has like this handle here. I'm not a big fan of that. Just make a missile. And it has this peg right here. So once you plug this in, you remember how this sounds like, like a machine gun. Um, you plug this in right here. And now it changes the sound. That's pretty cool, right? So let's see what it does on the other side. And just plug it right there. Okay, it still has the aircraft sounds on that side. And I believe they have different versions of these. So if you get the other versions and you plug it in, it'll make different sounds. Depends on what you plug in there, which is pretty cool. We didn't see that as kids. And well, I say kids, but I, I mean, we didn't see that in the 80s. So let's move right along. This is what you have on the bottom. This little gray panel right here. That's where you will replace the batteries. And um, it was two triple A batteries. Um, next, you have these pretty cool working landing gear. And the wheels on this landing gear actually roll, which is another plus. I mean, I could just see like having a, a, a collection of these and you have some for each of your different pilots like Ace and Air Raid and Drop Zone and Wild Bill and um, who's the other guy? Uh, Ghost Rider and some others. Scarlet's a pilot too. But um, it's, it's a lot smaller so it does, you, you couldn't imagine having a bunch of um, Phantom X-19s and a bunch of Sky Strikers and all that because they're, they're just too big. And they were too expensive. Now, at the bottom here, this little red section is a pod. For some strange reason, they decided to. And that's how you get it out. You just pull it out there. And you have another pilot here that um, pilots this down into enemy territory. And as I was reading it, saying that, this is made in Cobra colors with a Cobra emblem so that when they pilot this down, that Cobra would think that it's one of their vehicles and they could slip through undetected. It has these two wings right here. And there you have it. So my pros on this is that it's super small. Um, it's, it's, well, I wouldn't say super small, but it's, much smaller than some of the other aircraft that was released under the G.I. Joe uh, or Hasbro name. And um, I just like it. I think it's really cool. Um, I like the sticker detail. I like the new or rather going back to the old uh, G.I. Joe emblem. Um, but some of my cons are is um, I'm not a big fan of this. I mean, it is. It, 
I keep in mind that when I do these reviews and when I look at these things that these were made for children and that um, it's more of a play value to a child than the reality of what we would think it is as adults. But this thing right here, I wouldn't want to be in that. I mean, claustrophobia overload right there. Plus, it's just it just takes up room. It takes up too much space because it probably would have been better if there would have been a two seater um, or another seat for another figure in the back instead of having space taken up for this, you know, but um, other than that, I think it's pretty cool. Now, I want to see if a modern figure will fit in it. So I got my Steel Brigade Delta figure. Let's go ahead and see if he will go inside. And like nothing, he fits right in there. Perfect. Now, let's see if he'll fit in this thing. And as you see, he does fit. He actually fits. It takes a little bit of work. I had to like mush this down a little, but he does fit. So it's cool. That's a plus that modern's fitting it. That um, you know. So, so we're going to go ahead and fit that back in there. Pretty simple. All right. In my opinion, this vehicle, as it sits, used and all, um, outdated, is going to be a B plus for me. I really like this. I like the size. I like the playability with the modern figures, and I think. Um, just in my personal opinion, that it is the type of aircraft you must have in your collection. Maybe one, maybe two. I don't know. Sure. I'm not here to tell you how to live your life. But with that being said, I'm going to end this video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was informative for you, especially if you never owned one of these. I'm saying I think you should consider grabbing one at a proper price, at a good price, and just pick it up. All right. So I'm out. If you have any questions, Feel free to put them down in the comments below. I will get to them at my earliest convenience. I appreciate you all. Again, thank you. Peace.